Hi, this time I made a video about Sabertooth Moto Controller. I've been using this controller for five years. It has proved to be very stable and versatile as there has not been a single problem with it. I will show you how to do the wiring, how to make all the necessary configuration and which things to avoid. So let's get started. First, let me give you some basic information about this motor controller. Their webpage is located at dimensionengineering.com where you will find all the information you need. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, look under the documentation section where you will find manual, quick start guide, deep switch wizard, describe manual for all of you that you don't know what the describe is. Describe is computer software which allows you to make some extra configuration when connecting to Sabertooth via USB cable. Link for Describe software is right here. You can download and install it for free. And now let's continue our journey to Quick Start Guide. Here we will look three things. High current terminal block on the right side, another terminal block on the left side, and the deep switch configuration. Let's start with the high current terminal block. Here are actually things straightforward. Uh, two upper pins are for one motor, two pins at the bottom are for another motor, and two pins in the middle are for battery connection. On the left side, on the upper terminal block, we have two pins for power output, some people mistakenly think that this, uh, this is a power input. Actually, it is a power output uh, suitable for powering the remote control receiver. Next, we have two signal inputs on which we connect uh, two channels from remote control receiver. And these two channels will actually drive the motors. Next. Let's move to a smaller terminal block, which is completely optional and you don't have to use it if you don't want to. On the first pin, you can connect one channel from remote control uh, receiver. Uh, this channel is used for ramping and I will explain what ramping is later on. On second pin, you can also connect one channel and it is used for mirroring the joystick commands. And the last two pins are power outputs, which can be used for disengaging the motor brakes. And now we will continue at deep switch configuration. Uh, since we are using radio control, we will focus on this section. First two pins are for selecting radio control. The third pin is for selecting battery or the power supply. In our case, because we have alternator, uh, we will select power supply. Uh, you have to know that Sabertooth is a regenerative motor controller and when braking, it can put some uh, energy back to the battery. And since we have alternator, uh, this power has no place uh, to go and this can lead to all sorts of problem. So be sure to selecting power supply if you have alternator on your lawn mower. Next, in the fourth pin, we select between the independent and the mixed mode. In independent mode, uh, we drive motors with two separate joystick and with uh, mixed mode, uh, we drive both motors with uh, only one joystick. And next is fifth switch, uh, where you can choose between exponential and linear mode. Uh, the difference between these two is that in exponential mode, the joystick is more sensitive at lower speeds. So when parking your mower, you, you get some extra sensitivity. And with the last switch, which gave me a lot of headaches, you choose between the microcontroller and the transmitter mode. Uh, you will think that the way to go is a transmitter mode, but I will explain why to choose microcontroller mode over the transmitter mode. In the transmitter mode, Sabertooth automatically calibrates the stop position of joystick at startup. 
I once had a problem when driving a lawnmower on low batteries. When I moved joystick to forward position, the saber tooth reset and set this position to be center. Then when I released joystick, the mower went full speed backwards. For this reason, I recommend microcontroller mode where the joystick values are fixed and you will avoid runaway mower scenario. And the last thing that we will look at today are my uh, Sabertooth settings inside the Describe software. If we look at the general tab, we have some safety features, uh, half second delay to avoid some unstable power supply during startup, uh, minimal and maximum voltages. If uh, voltage uh, goes under minimal, which is 20 volts, the saber tooth will go into error mode and the motors will stop. Next, the RC tab. Uh, here we have minimum, maximum and the center position of joystick. I left these values to default. Um, here I set the timeout uh, mode and set the timeout time to 0 0.5. Eight second. What this feature does is, um, for if for some reason the remote control receiver lose signal, the saber tooth will stop the motors. Next, the calibration I set to fixed, as I explained a few minutes ago, to avoid runaway mover, leave these settings to fixed. Next, the motor output. Tab. I set some current limit and current limit smoothing uh, just in case. Um, also disable the regenerative uh, braking since I use alternator. And now let's focus on uh, ramping feature. I set it to 0 0.4 seconds. And now I will explain what this feature actually do. When you drive your lawnmower in a forward direction and then suddenly change into reverse, your lawnmower can tear up the grass or even flip over. Therefore, I use ramping to smooth the sudden movement of the joystick. Here's the example what ramping looks like when the joystick suddenly moves from one full position to another. And in the last step, power output, I selected voltage clamp for the saber tooth to route the power to a resistor and not the alternator. That's all for today. Hope you got useful information or learned something new. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Bye.